This is one of our medium-sized whale sharks. She is beautiful. Now, everybody, real quick, look at her back two bottom fins for me. If you look at those back two bottom fins, they're going to look like regular fins. There's not going to be anything kind of unusual looking about them. And that's how you can tell that she is a female. So when you're looking at sharks and rays, you always want to look at their back two bottom fins if you want to tell if they are a male or female or not. So look at this ray right here. If you see this ray right here, does everybody see kind of two things hanging back down between the, the uh, not this one, the one that just went that way. Of course, he's gone now. They're going to make it difficult for me. All right, here, look at this one. See on the back two bottom fins, see those two things sticking out under, underneath? Those are called claspers. Oh, and we got uh, one of our other males right here. You can see on him too. If you look at the back two bottom fins, there's going to be two finger-like appendages between those fins, and that is how you tell that they are males and for sharks and rays. So now you can look at any shark and ray in this habitat and tell if it is a male or a female. There's our sea turtle tank, but he is not what we're here to see get fed. We got to see him get some lettuce a few minutes ago. So when the whale shark feed gets started, you're gonna watch up on the top of the screens to your left and your right, and we've got those boats on the deck there. So those boats are gonna get in the water with trainers in them, and the trainers are gonna hook onto that rope that you see kind of spanning across the habitat horizontally. And there are four of these ropes, and there's gonna be four boats in this habitat, one for each whale shark. And they, you can see a couple more of them now, they, map, they mark lanes in this habitat. And we feed each whale shark in a specific lane for our Ocean Voyager. Now, we do this for two big reasons. One, so we can make sure we're monitoring how much food each of the whale sharks is getting. And two, that way we don't have two 20-foot long animals going after the same six-inch wide cup of food, because that could be pretty messy. Uh, I'm sure you've, uh, you wouldn't want to imagine two school buses trying to get through uh, a small area. That's basically what it would be like. It would be a pretty, pretty big traffic jam, and that's going to be pretty messy. So we got one of our, that's, uh, that's Taroko. He's our other male whale shark. You can get a better look at him right here. So the largest of our four whale sharks, who is actually coming up right over here, is going to be Trixie. Oh, no, wait, that's Alice. Where is Trixie? I have not seen Trixie yet. So she was over here a minute ago. But that's one of the cool things about this habitat is we can't see all of the animals in here at the same time because it's about 284 feet long, about 126 feet wide, and a grand total of 6.3 million gallons of water. It is the largest indoor habitat in North and South America. We're also the only ones over here to have whale sharks. They are absolutely beautiful and it is such a great opportunity to see them get fed and live here at the Georgia Aquarium. Now we got the boats that are getting in the water right now and I can actually tell you which whale sharks uh, are in which areas based on their placement in this habitat. Now we trained all the whale sharks to feed in this way before we brought them here to the Georgia Aquarium. So we actually got all four of our whale sharks from Taiwan. They were originally caught in Taiwan to be eaten. Luckily, they don't practice eating whale sharks in Taiwan anymore uh, because as of a couple months ago, whale sharks have unfortunately been moved on to the endangered species list. So we have to work even harder to protect these giant animals. Now we actually flew all four whale sharks over from Taiwan by UPS. They were in special containers to keep water pumping over their gills because they are sharks. They do have to keep swimming to breathe. And they came here and they were they landed in the Atlanta airport and were given a police escort all the way to the aquarium. And then they were lifted up into this habitat through a big old hatch on the far side of this habitat. Now, what we're going to be seeing up here right now is the trainer has a big long ladle in their hand. And in that ladle is some pink food that you can kind of see a little bit from here. Now, whale sharks are considered to be filter feeders. And being a filter feeder means that they eat very small pieces of food. Everything that our whale sharks eat is no bigger than about an inch 
warm. And that is because their throat is only about as wide as a quarter, so they physically cannot eat anything bigger than that. So here at the Georgia Aquarium, we mostly give them krill, which is a very small kind of shrimp, as well as chopped up bait fish and gel cubes. Now gel cubes is mostly algae, but it's got some other vitamins and minerals in it to help supplement their diet. Now one of the big things that they eat in their natural environment is plankton. Has anybody heard of plankton before? You have? Can you tell me what plankton is? That is very close. Plankton does contain a lot of microscopic organisms, and it's usually little baby fish and crustaceans. It's also sometimes uh, plants, like little bitty 